Welcome to Torah in the Kingdom of God. This is the portion Lek Leka, which means to go out. What is the deeper meaning God is saying to Abram in this go out? Well, in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Now Yahweh had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. And indeed, Abraham, at that time, Abram, would be the very first Hebrew because he had the faith to cross over, to leave his country, to leave his family, to leave everything he knew and trust God and go out, not even knowing exactly where or what was going to happen. And isn't it the truth? That is what faith is all about. We have to trust God to follow him even when we don't know where he is leading us. Now, in the present day of March 24th, 2014, Ethiopian Jews make Aliyah to the Knesset because a new bill is introduced that week to mark on the date of the Hebrew calendar, the 10th of Nisan, which is April the 10th of that year, Yom Aliyah, which is also in English, Yom Aliyah Day, or the Day of Aliyah. And it's a day to celebrate the national Jewish immigration to Israel. And of course, Israel is a nation that exists because of immigration. And that is the Hebrew word, Aliyah, which has even more deeper meaning uh, spiritually in the sense of uh, going up or ascending. And indeed, as believers, this is what we should all be doing, is making or going up. Also, this holiday is celebrated on, in the month usually around April, of the, uh, is also on the, or what we said, the 10th of Nisan, is also celebrated in the fall during the this actual Torah portion, Lech Lecha. And the reason is because this is when Abraham left his nation, his country, the, the land of Ur, as it says in the Bible, and came to the land of Canaan, which would become Israel. And so he was the very first Hebrew, which is pretty exciting when you think about it. And we know one day, uh, those who, of us who believe and I pray for so many that don't believe that they will, uh, at some point in their life, accept the Lord, come to the Lord. And we never know when that time is running out. So I pray that even if they're hearing this message, they will come to Him because those who believe one day will live in the new Israel, the new Jerusalem, as it comes down for heaven. And this is exactly what Psalm chapter 122, verse 6, is speaking about when it says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. And so that prayer is because it's a futuristic, uh, prophetic event that one day we know that indeed there will be a new Jerusalem, a heavenly Jerusalem that will come down. Uh, the Bible is replete with so many examples and so many stories of this. In Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3, getting back to Abraham, he says, the Lord says to Abraham, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So you see, that's exactly what Psalm 122 is saying. So as followers, followers of Yeshua, we claim Abraham is our spiritual father. In essence, we have the same faith that Abraham has. So Abraham departed as Yahweh had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Aram. Then Abram took Sarah, or Sarai, his wife, she wasn't named Sarah yet, God would change their names, he took his wife and Lot his brother's son and all their possessions they went that they had gathered 
and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Then we find out very soon that there is a, a famine in the land. And this famine actually foreshadows an end times famine. famine. And we know uh, that in the book of Revelation, it speaks about that the uh, Euphrates River would actually dry up so that armies could come from the east and uh, make war at Armageddon. And perhaps we are not far from that event. But let's go back again to Abram in Genesis chapter 12, verse 7. And then it says, Yahweh appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land, speaking about the land of Canaan, which would become the land of Israel. And there he built an altar to Yahweh, who had appeared to him. Now, we know and from reading the rest of the Bible that Abraham never actually uh, saw, the, or not saw, he did see it. He never saw it in the sense of it. It was never, he never realized it. He never actually realized the totality of that promise of God. But it would come to his descendants, and that's soon going to happen in reality in a very powerful way when the Lord returns. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 10, Now there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to dwell there, for the famine was severe in the land. Now this, this foreshadows the fact that, of course, first of all, Abraham left Canaan and went to Egypt. That would foreshadow the fact that there would be another famine in Canaan when there was the family of Israel. And remember, Joseph would go down into Egypt and then the rest of the family would come down, and then they would come out of Egypt. That would be the Exodus, which we'll be talking about in the next several weeks. And then finally, Yeshua had to flee Israel, to, to flee Herod, who wanted to kill him because he was killing all the male children uh, because he knew of the prophecy of a, a male child was going to be king. So Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, Yeshua, had to flee Israel, go to, to Egypt, and then he would come out of Egypt. And it says in the Bible, of course, that uh, the Lord would call his son out of Egypt. And that really does apply to Israel, because Israel is his son as the nation. But even more specific, it calls the, the Messiah, Yeshua, his son, coming out of Egypt. Now, in Hebrews 11.10, for he waited, this is speaking of Abraham, for he waited for the city which has foundations whose builder and maker is God. So Abraham was looking towards this new Jerusalem. He was looking for this actual place, although, as I've just spoken, he would not realize it, but he was looking for it. And it's, it speaks here in Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, that it actually has foundation. It's not some you know, pie-in-the-sky dream or some idea that he has. It's an actual place with foundations, and the builder of this place and maker of this place is God. So it's a real place, and it is coming uh, one day. Then in Hebrews eleven thirteen, it says, These all died. These being, if you looked at the whole chapter of Hebrews, you, look, you would see you would see Adam, you would see uh, uh, Noah, you would see Enoch, and then, of course, Sarah and Abraham. And it says, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. You know, they, they were promised them, and they would have them, but they were not in their lifetime, so to speak. And so they, they were assured of them, and they embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. And in actuality, all of our forefathers, from, from Abraham forward and from us back, all, you know, the ones who have gone on before us, they are the same. They have, they dreamed their lives, they lived their lives looking and hoping for this futuristic city, this heavenly city that was coming, and they died not actually seeing it, seeing it. And I can tell you as a hospice nurse, there was a, there's been a few times where I actually had patients that were looking into this place, and they spoke about it. 
uh, they didn't speak very long because as soon after they, they would make mention of looking into some beautiful city, they would soon be gone and they were there. Uh, so we just have to hold on to the fact, uh, the fact, the truth that this time is going to come. So this famine of the word of God is now here. So God's not only speaking about a famine of, of water shortage and food shortage. He's also speaking more critically about a shortage for the word of God. It says in Amos chapter 8 verse 11, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine on the, uh, on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for the water, but of hearing the words of Yahweh. They shall wander from sea to sea, and from north to south, or excuse me, north to east, and they shall run to and fro, seeking the word of God, but they shall not find it. Because of this lack of knowing the word of God, few understand this following mystery given to Abraham. And this is the mystery that Abraham was given. In, in chapter 15 of Genesis, beginning in verse 13, he said to Abram, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and they will serve them, and they will afflict them four hundred years. And indeed, that's exactly what would happen. You know, Abraham's children, which would become uh, Israel, would be in Egypt as slaves for four hundred years. And at the end of that time, God would bring them out, as you remember, the Passover or Pesach, and they would go out of Egypt, leave Egypt after all those miracles, the ten miracles, with the last one being the slaying of the firstborn, and they would go into the land and, and near the land, and they would wander in the wilderness for forty years. And he says, And also that nation whom they serve I will judge, and afterward they shall come out with great possessions, which is exactly what happened. And then he says to Abraham, and now as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace, but you shall be buried at a good old age. So Abraham was just promised that he was going to live out his life and, and live a good life. But in the fourth generation, they shall return here, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. And what is this speaking about? Well, in, in generalities, it's, the Amorites were, were was just a coining a term uh, for well, not just a nation, but for all the nations of Canaan who were in such incredible uh, wickedness and idolatries and fornications and adulteries and just perversities to the point that they were really not even redeemable anymore. Only God knows when that when that would happen. And, and after four generations, after 400 years, God would send his people, Israel, into that land to take the land, he would give them their land, and they would take it from them, and they would slay the wicked. Uh, even, but even then, there were a few that were redeemable, that would, that they would be able to, uh, bring back, you could say, uh, they could repent, turn back to God, they make Teshiva back to God. But it was only a few. And so, that foreshadows and pictures us, for us, the very end of the age, the very end of, of this present time that we were, or we are in. And so in the end, Israel will rise up and the Lord Yeshua will defeat the evil world. Uh, Revelation 6, 2, and I looked and behold a white horse and he who sat on it had a bow and a crown was given to him and he went out conquering and to conquer. And it's only, you know, people always say, well, that's all Revelation talks about. Well, listen, so much of the Bible speaks of this conquering king that's coming. Psalm 45, 4, And in your majesty ride prosperously because of your truth, humility, and righteousness, and your right hand shall teach you awesome things. Revelation 19, 13, He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And then finally, Psalm 45, verse 3. Gird your sword upon your thigh, O mighty one, with your glory and your majesty. So indeed, the, the Lord of glory, Yeshua HaMashiach, He is coming back to judge this earth. Uh, when the fullness of iniquity takes place on this earth as it did in the days uh, that Israel conquered Israel, they are going to do it again with the Lord in front of them 
and they mostly will just be witnesses, I suppose, as they watch their king and our king uh, take back the earth and reign and rule forever and ever and ever. And he is going to do this. It will be with great violence and great judgment. So I pray that um, that you understand this, that this these are real events. It's not a fairy tale. It's not a movie. It's really going to happen that the King of kings and Lord of lords he is going to return to his earth that he made, that he owns, and he's going to make Satan give up his dominion, and he will take it back, and he will destroy all wickedness off planet earth. And for those who know him, we will rule and reign with him forever and ever. I pray you know him. God bless.